All right, guys. So this is a little off of what we usually do. Today we're on the channel of Anime O Four. Okay, so the reason why we're here is because of his most recent video. Jerry's cork was stolen from Deku. I don't think that could even be remotely true. In all honesty. Because telepathy can be pulled up into two types, different types of things. Being able to move stuff and being able to contact people. So, all the quirks have a certain mall scientific explanation for them. Now, we're going to be talking about two different things today. Shiraki and Deku. We're going to start with Deku. Start, start off with. Deku had a quirk. No doubt about it. He had to have had some sort of cork. But it could also be he never had one in the first place because of his parents' corks. His mother's cork, on a, mol on a scientific level, would be ra would be having the molecules react to her commands that she gives them. By moving things around, she's commanding them with her mind, telling them where to go and where to be placed. A quirk that is not meant for combat. A quirk that is, has zero capability of destroying molecules. It is primarily a support quirk. It can have combat implications, yes. But, the fact of the matter is, it does not destroy molecules like the quirk decay does. Decay breaks molecules down and forces them to age at a rapid, rapid state, causing them to go through their entire life cycle in a matter of seconds, destroying them entirely. Now, the age gap here between Deco and Tomura, five years, I get it, but here's the thing. For a quirk like that to activate when you're just a baby would mean your infinite death. Because as a baby, you are fascinated with your body because you cannot see anything. So you use the feel, the sense of touch the most. So touching your own body. If he was to have that quirk and he would have touched his own body, Deku would have completely decayed his entire body within a matter of seconds. Officially ending the My Hero Academia storyline right then and there. So that cannot be true at all. Unfortunately, amazing theory by Anime Uproar and another YouTuber. I'm so sorry I forgot your name. But if I remember, I'll make sure to put you in the comments below and give you a shout out as well. But that quirk is just way too dangerous to be able to be manifested at such a young age because that is just infinite death to the infant right then and there. So, where did Tomura get the court from? Who knows? We'll get into that in a minute, but the other part about Deku is his father's quark. Being able to blow fire. That burns molecules. Forcing them to be lit aflame. And then rapidly breaking them down in that way. Now, there's absolutely no way for these two quirks to mingle together. They are not compatible in the least. Now, with that said, the only other way it could work is like Todoroki's situation. He can use ice and fire. Although they are polar opposites, and ice freezes molecules into a into a normal sta into a stasis state where they cannot move at all and eventually give up and die. Well, fire, as we just said, burns molecules and forces them to break down, down forcefully, but it takes longer than the quark decay does. The only way Deku could have had a compound quark is if he could use telep the, you know, telekinesis type thing and the fire from his mouth like a dragon the fire cork would breathing fire from your mouth as a cork would work this way 
dragons had a certain type of gland in their stomachs and throat. I don't remember what it was called, but in mythology, it was explicitly explained that they are, they hold, the throat one, the throat sacs hold a type of flammable gas, like nitrogen and all that, but the flammable gas is actually carbon dioxide, because it has no oxygen. Tweaking carbon dioxide just right can make it into a deadly explosive. Completely combusting itself and destroying everything around it. Now the stomach, I don't exactly know what's in there, but my guess is like some sort of flammable fuel that is like kicked up. So as it gets to the mouth after the gas is being released, it ignites, and it mixes with it, releasing the fire. So that's what I believe how that cord, cord would work. And there's been speculation that Deku's father is all for one, which I am fully on board with because there's also been many theories about his father being a firefighter. Right? But why would they let a firefighter with a fire type cork into their ranks? They wouldn't. Because he would only make it worse. They want primarily ice, water, snow, anything that nullifies it. Completely and utterly nullifies it. Now, here's the thing. That wouldn't be a problem for All for One whatsoever. He could have taken the fire breathing cork from another another person and the water water or whatever type of nullifying cork. That is that is the opposite to fire. So he could have worked as a firefighter, firefighter for a time, posing as one, saying his cork was one thing and to his family was another, which explains why his father disappeared at such a young age. I believe that All for One covered up his death by roasting some some unlucky soul in a fire so badly to where when, or had someone else do it for him, when he responded and went to the building, of course he's strong enough to survive this. When the building came crashing down on top of him and they found the dead body that was unrecognizable, all they had to do was tweak the body to how they needed it. And they would have believed that all for one, Decker's father, was dead. Completely ran off dead. Which gave him a free pass to move on. Without his family ever knowing. Now, if that is indeed the case, I believe strongly that Deku... If he had a cork, he could have been related to All for One being his father or related to All for One's brother. Because it is completely possible that he manifested his cork at birth if it was his little brother's. The cork, to, the power to be able to give away. Primarily only give away, right? So he could have manifested that at any point. And to recreate a cork, they need the basis of it because how complicated all for one's cork is all for one to be able to take and give away at the same time it is so powerful but yet so complicated it cannot be replicated perfectly so my theory is the doctor Mark Deku if he is indeed related to all all for one's family he could have had the core. He could have gotten like a multi generations gap of the court to be able to be taken away. So, he could have seen that and be like, "This is the perfect opportunity to get our plan off the ground to mana to not manifest, but mass produce all for one to potential vessels." Now, that would be epic to find out, but that's a little off track. From what we're doing here. Now that we discussed Deku's thing, since his parents' quirks do not mix and mingle at all, they could not, on a scientific level, they could not create decay. Unfortunately, the differences between the quirks are just so far apart, it can, it's not even feasible. So, just the fact is, 
Decay is something aging at a fast rate and dying. So, rotting away. The first comes rotting, then comes decay. So, in that sense, just how they break down molecules individually, Deku could, could not have had decay. Never. He, was, he would never be able to have decay in his life. Now, I believe Tomura's grandmother, with flashbacks that we've gone so far, she has always worn gloves. Gloves, guys. And what is the primary thing for someone that doesn't understand how to use their quirk to its fullest? Like decay. Only one person was ever notified to have it. I believe that was Tomura's grandmother. And the reason why she always wore gloves and only used one for all is because she was terrified of the quirk's power, which all for one wanted. So when he killed her, he took her quirk away. And since she had already passed one for all on, he could no longer take that. So he took decay from her. And at the ripe age of five, gave it to Tomura. And that's where it makes a full loop there. But that theory is, is all, unfortunately, in the time of her defeat and death, I don't know if that's feasible that she could have had the quirk decay. Because as far as we understand, as far as I understand so far, and like you guys can tell me anything if I'm wrong or not, but I think she was alive at the time Tomura was five. If she wasn't, then that would put the theory of him taking the cork decay from her and giving it to him perfectly. And that would explain why she always wore gloves. Or the gloves could have just been a support item. Like like All Might's All Might's golden wrist guards on all of his costumes. Those were a type of wrist support item that I that I believe anyways. Because the whole entire suit was meant as a support item. And Deku ends up getting bracers and gloves to help with it. So, you know, with that whole thing, shebang, that's what I believe. Now, back to Tomura. He was born corkless. Abused as a child. Got into the habit of itching away at his problems. Metaphorically... And quite literally. Poor young Tomura's hair became white out of petrification. When you become extremely petrified, no matter what hair your color is, and it's like a truly terrifying experience, no matter what it is, like super traumatizing to the point of where you don't even recognize yourself or recognize the world anymore, your hair will turn white as your roots... Roots and hair fibers age extremely on an unnatural, super, super, like, overdrive state. Like, rapidly being aged like the cork decay does. Does, but in real life, when it happens, I still don't understand the full entire breakdown of what, ca of how it's caused, like, I know how it's caused, but how it takes effect. I know it turns completely and utterly rare. It has to be an experience so truly terrifying or traumatizing that your hair will change color. And his red eyes. The eye color change. That indicates albino, albinoism. Which also means, which also, also the eye color can be affected by the same thing. Your eyes going red, developing albinism. Although it's like extremely rare, it's more rare than the water disease, water skin disease, where water will will hurt you, no matter what. It will hurt your skin if it gets touched by any sort of water. Or water compound. It's more rare than that. 
I don't know exactly when something like that would happen, or if it would happen, or how it would happen, but that's my guess. Now, back on topic about why all for one chose Toma. I think he knew about All Might and what he wanted to become. When he learned about his rival, Tomura's grandmother, training him and giving him the power. Right? Right? He decided a way to destroy her, her family, and All Might. All in the same instantaneous thing. Way. Of course, he revealed to All Might way later because he wanted to crush his spirit after retirement. To cripple him as a teacher for the next one for all user. So, that clearly didn't work as we witnessed. Because All Might's still kicking, he's still training Deku to the fullest. So. Now that we've discussed all that. His court is so rare, is so rare that we only ever had one user. Now, user would the court was either taken from another person, perhaps, in, perhaps one of all for one's inner circle that he be, that he decided his court would work perfectly, and the others agreed with him and helped him take it away. To give to Tomura when he brought him home. Right? Or here's another one. Decay was completely comprised of quarks that, that broke down molecules. And tweaked with so many different quarks. Quarks and little bits and bits pieces in here. Because he can make compound quarks all he wants. Develop new quarks as he goes. Separate them. Find them. Do whatever he wants with them, right? He could be the creator and first user of decay. All for one. But in but in an instant, when he wanted to put a plan to action, he took that cork and gave it to Tomura to destroy his own family. That had abused him as a child. Now... Now that we've discussed all that, I really hope like all this stuff get all the things that we just talked about today have some light shed upon them. I really enjoyed Anime Opera's video on this. It was super well done. There are just so many things I disagree with, disagree with on a fundamental basis, and the fact is that Deku's parents. And, their, and his bloodline has never been explained yet. So we have no information on telling if he, if anywhere in his bloodline could have been the cork decay. So that is off the table for now. And I know this is a little off what we usually do, but I'm doing some filler stuff. Because I don't, I can't figure out what is like popular hip these days. So I decided... I'm a weeb. I love anime. I have some. I have a lot of theories about different animes. Why not throw together a quick anime theory set, set portion of the channel? So, yeah, that's what I did. So, fact is, Deku and Tomura could be related. Deku and All for One could be related. Like full circle tie, tie there. But the Quark Decay, with information we have on how Quarks work, how the hereditary system works, and their scientific breakdowns of their Quarks, and how they react to the environment and with their own bodies. So far, what we know about Deku's family. Family, so far, Deku could not have been born with the Quark Decay, or have developed it at a young age as... An infant, because he would be dead. He would kill himself with it, would have killed himself with it with the first day, because infants, they use smell, sound, and touch. To identify themselves and how small they are, they feel themselves all around, touch their face, and if it was activated at a young age, 
him adjusting his height and constantly reminding himself how big he was would have killed him. Now him having a cork to pass along corks to be able to help manufacture all for one cork. I love that theory so much. I'm glad I came up with it. I think it's so it's own I think it could be a solid theory if it turns out to be true. Now with all that said, this is all just speculation on and what I know about molecules and scientific breakdowns and what we know to up to date with My Hero Academia. I have not completed all the way into season five yet, so I'm going off of my knowledge. Now, if you guys have watched all the way up to the latest episode, please hit in the comments below. Give me information so we can better develop this theory into its ultimate form to make it to push it beyond its limits to be plus ultra as all might would say and i have a tapestry of all Might and a figure of him in all honesty i love all my favorite character hands down epic guy so yes with everything done and said now i hope you guys enjoyed the video so much hope you guys leave a like on it you know subscribe to the channel because I will every now and then be posting something like this on an anime that I figure out a type of theory for. So. Big thank you for Anime Uproar though. For inspiring this theory. Because of this video I was able to come up with this theory. Completely flat out. I owe it to Anime Uproar and the, and the other anime. Anime anime youtuber on his video Shigaraki's Cork was stolen from Deku check them out amazing guys I love their con I love the content content that is put out on these channels so much I just cannot remember the other guys YouTube channel for life me and again I apologize for that wholeheartedly I will find your YouTube name and put you into the description I swear it but now I hope you guys have an amazing night or day or wherever you guys are. Just hope everything is amazing for you. If not so much, I hope this helped you, you know, feel better. At the end of the day, my channel is here to do whatever you guys want to do. Theories, lore, gameplay, live action, anything you guys want. So at the end of the day, I want to make people feel better. Nothing else, nothing more. I just want to help people. Now, if you guys like this theory, let me know. If you guys have any more information on this stuff that I could potentially use, then let me know. So, without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next one. I'll see you later.